Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis once again. Today's topic is aggressive versus indolent non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, let's get started. In the previous video, we have talked about non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, so make sure to watch that previous video before this one. Lymphoma, Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's? Which one is more common? Of course, non-Hodgkin's. Which one is only nodal? Hodgkin's. Non-Hodgkin's has nodal and extra nodal. It has constitutional symptoms. Could be B cell or T cell. Which one is more common? Of course, B cell. And again, B cell is either aggressive or indolent. How about Hodgkin's lymphoma? Hodgkin's lymphoma has the Reed Sternberg cell. If you don't find the Reed Sternberg cell, it's non Hodgkin's. We have risk factors for non Hodgkin's lymphoma. We have talked about them briefly in the previous video, but today let's just elaborate. We have viruses such as Epstein Barr virus can lead to Burkitt's lymphoma, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, or primary CNS lymphoma. Human T cell lymphotropic virus 1, human T cell leukemia or lymphoma, we have talked about this in a previous video. Hepatitis C virus can lead to B cell lymphoma. Or immunological risk factors could be either autoimmune disease or immune deficiency syndrome. Autoimmune such as Jogren's salivary lymphoma, GI lymphoma, or Hashimoto leading to thyroid lymphoma. Radiation exposure can lead to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. By the way, we use radiation to treat Hodgkin's lymphoma and this radiation therapy can lead to non-Hodgkin's. So you're trying to cure Hodgkin's lymphoma but now you end up with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. What a miserable life. H. pylori can lead to gastric lymphoma. It's mucosa associated lymphatic tissue lymphoma or maltoma. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma Nodal plus extra nodal could be liver or spleen, GIT, thyroid, testes, skin, brain, rarely bone, but don't forget bone because non Hodgkin's lymphoma can have a leukemic phase. Constitutional symptoms or B symptoms such as fever, weight loss, night sweat. Again, associated with these viruses, some lymphomas cause compression syndrome. Some lymphomas have IgM leading to hyperviscosity or autoimmune cytopenia. Others have a gamma globulinemia leading to infections. By the way, Hodgkin's lymphoma, there is no extra nodal spread. Huge difference. As you know, non Hodgkin's lymphoma is the second most common cancer in AIDS patient. Again, it's a late manifestation. Non Hodgkin's lymphoma can take place after organ transplant, immunosuppressed patients, or in congenital immunodeficiency. What's common here is decreased immunity. Median age is 50 years old, and the older you get, the higher risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now contrast that with Hodgkin's lymphoma, because Hodgkin's lymphoma, the patients are younger, usually young adults. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, again, has an overt leukemic phase because it can involve the bone marrow. It's a terrible bone marrow here. And cancer cells can be seen in the blood. Contrast that with Hodgkin's lymphoma, because Hodgkin's lymphoma has no leukemic phase whatsoever. Why is that? Because Hodgkin's lymphoma doesn't have extra nodal involvement. It doesn't spread to the bone marrow. Now, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma can be either intermediate or high grade, also known as aggressive, or low grade, also known as indolent, lazy, slow. Let's first start with the aggressive intermediate to high grade lymphoma. Patients are usually younger, they have more B symptoms such as fever, weight loss, night sweats, very sensitive to chemo and we treat with the intention to cure. Does that mean that we cure all the cases? Of course not, it's an aggressive lymphoma. The median survival rate is short, probably one to two years and then the patient unfortunately will die. Low grade lymphoma patients are older, fewer B symptoms. Higher stage of presentation, sensitive to chemo but not curable lesions by chemo. The median survival rate is long, 7 to 10 years. Okay, and they can change or upgrade into the other type called the aggressive 
non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And here are the specific subtypes. Aggressive, such as diffuse large B cell, Burkitt's lymphoma, mantle cell lymphoma, precursor T lymphoblastic, and B lymphoblastic. The indolent are follicular, marginal zone, CLL or SLL, hairy cell leukemia or lymphoma, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, and mycosis fungoides. Of the aggressive lymphomas, which one is the most common? And the answer is diffuse large B cell lymphoma. We can write it like this, diffuse large B cell lymphoma in short. From the indolent, which one is more common? The answer is follicular lymphoma. Let's just imagine, for the sake of imagination, that Aladdin's genie has appeared to you and tell you, told you that you have been cursed by gods and you will get a lymphoma. Which one of them will you choose? Follicular, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, or Burkitt's lymphoma? Of course, you should choose follicular lymphoma. Why? It's indolent. Does that mean it's a good thing to have? Of course not. It's a terrible thing to have. But compared to diffuse large B-cell and Burkitt's, it's the least evil choice. Thank you, Jeannie. And that's it for today. Again, don't forget, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma could be either the aggressive subtypes or the indolent subtypes. These are bad, these are less bad. They grow very fast, the median survival rate is low, here the median survival rate is higher. Here the most common one is diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and the most common indolent is the follicular lymphoma. Don't ever forget that. That's it for today, thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, as always be safe, stay happy and study hard. Until next time.